you? Ever want to rob a bank, an airplane, perhaps the White House? Ever want to be a rejected circus performer, smuggling crack to local CIA agents? Have you ever wanted to roleplay an average citizen in Chicago? Well, lucky for you, there's a game that does all of that. Payday 2. Payday 2 is a game developed by Overkill and Starbreeze, and it slaps harder than a drunk belligerent father. I've never loved gunning down droves of officers while music blares in my ears, but Payday 2 changes that. It's able to be fun, violent, and challenging all at once. So if this idea of fame, fortune, and being put on an FBI watch list tickles your pickle, join me as we crack open a vault of gameplay, lore, and characters that make me exhale vigorously, scream internally, and challenge God in this awesome American protest simulator, Payday 2. Disclaimer, the following gameplay is modded and there may be some visual and UI mods present in my gameplay. However, nothing is game-changing, so please keep that in mind as I will touch upon it later. Enjoy. To get things off to a wonderful start, this game's premise must have been created by God, only because God would make the fucked up abomination called Europe and say that it's okay. Much like Europe, justice is a foreign concept, and the payday gang use it to their will, by robbing banks, goats, and invading the literal department of fucking justice in order to show America how stupid and corrupt their government is. Through crime and contacts, the payday gang doesn't make it to the top alone. Nope, they have the all-father voice of Bane, played by the music composer of the game, Simon Vicklin. Bane's job is to be the circus master for you clowns lucratively planning your heist, so all you need to do is show up and tell the SWAT to fuck off once you arrive. Once you have slaughtered the first responders, which most likely had families and dogs, you can then tell Bane to shut the hell up as he braids with needy demands such as... Guys, the thermal drill. Go get it. And... Guys, my DLC content. Go buy him. Oh, did I mention the DLC? This game has so much goddamn DLC content it would put EA to shame. However, this DLC content is something that EA's isn't. Good. All DLC content made for Paycheck Dose is usually well thought out and adds additions to your arsenal instead of adding debt to your bank statement. I recommend buying the Legacy Edition of the game for the official Payday 2 experience. But besides the mountain of mouth-watering DLC content that would make EA profusely splooge, there's actually some really good gameplay going on too, which we'll talk about now. So where do I begin? The gameplay in this video juego is fucking stellar, from the shooting to the bludgeoning. I've never been bored. The arsenal is expansive, ranging from a comically large spoon to a comically small grenade launcher. But depending on the type of heist and your approach, you will need to carefully pick and choose your weapons. Usually when approaching a heist, there are two ways of carrying out the task. The fun way and the funny way. The first being stealth, and the latter being loud and proud like a Taco Bell toilet explosion. In stealth, you can sneak around and take out guards who barely make minimum wage. Once you have fooled the pager operator, you can then kill all the civilians you cannot cable tie. However, you will be fined a small amount of money to encourage you not to turn the non-combatants into Swiss cheese. Now you can wait five minutes while the drill repeatedly breaks and you have to hit it like a disobedient child in order for it to work. Once that's done, take 30 minutes to lockpick the safe deposit boxes, take the gold, and prepare for the best gameplay of all, Bag Moving Simulator. That's right, this isn't payday anymore, no, it's Bag Moving Simulator. Have fun spending the rest of your life moving gold bullion to the funny ice cream van. That was only one stealth heist. For loud, you'll do the exact same thing, but with the firm arm of the law shoving its fist up your ass. Due to this game being made for cooperation, you don't have to be pounded by the law alone like a cheap porno. You should always have friends to play this game with. If you don't, have fun with the AI. The AI in this game might as well be vegetableized because they have the reaction time of a fucking snail and you will most likely go into custody before they realize you're down. Putting that aside, the combat is satisfying. Popping a helmet has the same dopamine release as snorting coke and I thoroughly recommend headshots for maximum happiness output. But besides gunning through the entire US armed police force, there are a few enemy types to consider. Of course, there are the run of the mill officers which dutifully scream at you and die. But there are special forces at play here, all have special abilities and different forms of engagement. The taser will freeze you and make you fire at random. The cloaker will bully you. The bulldozer will shred your ass like cheese on a grater. The shield will be an annoying bastard. The sniper will end your death sentence run and the medic will make you violate the Geneva Convention. Though it can feel overwhelming to fight an entire army of officers and special forces all at once, remember, there's four of you and about a thousand of them. The odds are in your favor. So you have the guns and you know who to point them at. It's time to get skilled. Perk decks and skill points can be used to enhance your killing capabilities. Starting from number one, they are... But wait, that's not all. You have skill points to redeem. You can use them for a plethora of things, such as bullying your teammates or becoming an indestructible force of nature. Whichever way you slice it, the cops will fear you. As for a good beginner-friendly perk deck, use Stoic. This perk deck allows you to take every bullet and absorb it into your flesh. You can be God and do the damage of a nuclear blast by nullifying damage through alcohol. You should also have enough firepower to level Los Angeles. The downside of this deck is that you have no armor, and you are an angry meatball. But you'll be an angry meatball with a stupidly broken gun ready to turn their pro state into no states. Mmm, that's fucking gameplay. I notice you're looking at my gameplay and possibly stroking out through the lights and flashy effects. These are mods. This game is mod compatible, because 
you know, why the fuck not? I want to turn Duke into Beecroft. Why the hell not? I'm going to convert Sydney into a lolly. Fuck it, let's get arrested. There are mods that also play with the UI of the game, such as Vanilla HUD Plus and Hotline Miami HUD. These aren't required to play, but I recommend them for the information that it conveys. Though the mods may seem strange, what's even stranger is this game's lore. Believe it or not, this game actually has a story. The phrase well written and completely fucked up are synonyms here when discussing Payday's lore. However, thanks to the Noli and his sexy masculine British accent, he put all that lore into a four hour video. This will be an abbreviated version of that. Now let's go rob a bookstore. Hi, if you've made it this far in a shit show of a review, I'd kindly ask you to hit the like and subscribe button. Like the Payday Gang, I must commit crime in order to feed myself, because YouTube ain't doing shit for me. So slap that funny thumbs up, and if I made you exhale through your nostrils at any point in this video, consider hitting the subscribe button. It's totally up to you. Now, spoiler warning for the nine-year-old game. The story of Payday starts with a guy named Bane, after robbing everything, sat down and said, man, I want to be a libertarian. So instead of doing something difficult, like lobbying Congress about the problems of America, which, now that I think about it, is pretty difficult, he decides to hire four thugs to kill a multitude of law enforcement officers and steal money. These criminals, consisting of Downs the crew chief, Hoxton the gunman, Wolf the mechanic, and Chains the diversity hire, make up the Payday Gang. They torment New York City before going into a rest break, where Hoxton is arrested. Bane decides to centralize his operation in Washington, D.C. and expand his criminal connections through Crime.net, which is basically Craigslist, but for gangsters. Bane, along with several other contractors such as Vlad, the Elephant, and Locke, buy you to rob banks, frame political figures, and steal Christmas. One day, Dallas has a cavity and goes to the dentist. However, his dentist is not his dentist, it's actually a different dentist named The Dentist. Mr. Dentist says that he can free Hoxton, but first Dallas and company must do fetch quests to free him. Once they get Hoxton out, the game kills Columbia, and it makes some people very angry. At this point, the lore takes a weird turn off the edge of a fucking cliff. Bane gets kidnapped, and Locke, who betrayed you in Alaska, is actually a good guy. It also turns out there is giant titans and stuff, and some kings who rule over the earth. It also turns out that Bane is a watcher and is supposed to protect a king, which we learn is the elephant. Once the gang figures out what the hell is happening, they invade the White House, but not before freeing Bane. Bane explains there's a big temple under the White House, which is, will allow them to live forever or something. So the crew goes to the Capitol. At this point, the dentist is the bad guy, because the actor that plays him has one facial expression, which is evil. Once you make it to the underground, you kill ghosts, solve a puzzle from the Titans, and make it to Baldwin's Lament. After killing the dentist, Dallas and crew put some gold into some slots, and Bane is teleported into the body of the president. I know this probably confused you more than it helped you, but I swear to God the writing is good. I just don't have time to slam four hours of content into a small video. Seriously, watch Noli's video for an in-depth breakdown. So now that we know all of this, we can then conclude this thing. Now, with all the bases being loaded, should you buy this game? Yes, I love this game to pieces, and I know you will too. From the combat, the characters, and the drug-induced fever dream lore, this game is worth it. Get it on sale or not on sale, it doesn't matter. This game is fun, engaging, and a completionist's worst nightmare. If you're a poor boy, like me, and don't want to drop $20 dues on the Legacy Edition, then the must-buy DLC is the Sydney Character Pack, Clover Character Pack, and Golden Green Casino Heist. I would get into the technical mumbo-jumbo, but that's not funny. So please, buy this game and experience the adventure of Payday 2 for yourself. With all that being said, it's time to delete my search history, change my name, and disappear. Because they're coming after me.